Now that the user endpoints are sitting behind authentication, we're going to turn our attention towards our tasks. We haven't worked with tasks in a while, and if we're going to set up authentication, there's a few important things we need to do. First up, we need to figure out how to create a relationship between a user and the tasks that they've created. This is going to be important to make sure that users can only access and manage their tasks and that they can't mess with someone else's. And that's exactly where we're going to start. So to kick things off, what we need is index.js. We don't need auth.js anymore. We're going to need the user model. We don't need the user router anymore. We need the task model. And last up, we need the task router. So we're going to kick this video off by working with these four files. And the first file we're going to touch on is task.js. Now there are two ways we could set up this relationship between a user and a task. The user could store something like the IDs of all of the tasks they've created, or the individual task could store the ID of the user who created it. And that second approach is the one we're going to go with. It is the better approach. The only change we're going to make to our data is we'll be adding a single field onto task. It's going to store the ID of the user who created it, and that's going to allow us to lock down the task management later on. So right here, let's go ahead and set up another field on the task model. We can call this anything we like, something like owner or creator or user or author would be appropriate. You could use any of those. I'm going to go ahead and stick with owner for this one, and we'll set it up like an object, which we've done for all of our other model fields. Now from here, we're going to customize the field. We are going to set the type. So let's go ahead and start with that. The type for owner is going to be an object ID. And to set this up, we have to use something on mongoose. So right here as the value for type, it is mongoose dot capital S schema dot capital T types, then dot capital O object capital I D. Perfect. So this is saying that the data stored in owner is going to be an object ID, and that's correct. Additionally, we'll also set required equal to true for this, like we've done for other fields that must be provided. And we're going to say that if you're creating a task, you have to provide an owner for that task. No longer will it make sense to be able to anonymously create a task. Now that we have this in place and we've changed our data, what I want to take a quick moment to do is trash our existing database. We have old task data inside of there without owners, and that doesn't make sense to have anymore. So what I'm going to do is right click the database and drop it completely. Once the database is dropped, we can go ahead on focus on actually creating tasks that belong to a specific user. And to do that, we first need a user to create the task with. Over in Postman, we can get that done. So we just deleted the database, but as long as our app is running, we can still add data to it. It'll automatically get created for us. Right here as an example, we can fire off create user to create a new user. And this is the user that we're going to use when creating our very first tasks that have the owner field. So to do this, let's head over to the task router and make a change to the very first endpoint we have inside of here. This right here is the endpoint responsible for creating new tasks. Now this endpoint doesn't provide an owner and it's not behind authentication. We're going to go ahead and change that. The first thing we need to do is load in the auth middleware so we can actually use it. We'll start there. Const auth equals we'll be using require to load that in dot dot to get out of the routers folder forward slash middleware forward slash auth. And once we have that in place, we're going to add it as the second argument to the post method. So right here, auth moving the async callback function to the third argument position. Now that authentication is set up, it's time to make sure that when a task is created, it's associated with the person who is authenticated. That means we're going to be altering how we provide the data right here. I'm actually going to comment out this line and leave it in place so we can compare and contrast the two solutions. Now the new one is going to start off much the same way. We can still create a constant called task. 
and we still use the new operator with the task constructor function. Though instead of just specifying request.body, we're going to provide our own object right here. We want all of the stuff from request.body with the addition of an owner property. So to do that, I'll start by using the ES6 spread operator with request.body. That's gonna copy all of the properties from body over to this object. So that would copy over the description for the task as well as optionally the completed value if it's provided. Then right here, we're going to hard code in the owner. The owner is not something that should be specified via the request. There's no need to pass the owner ID along with the data you send as part of the request body. It's all from the authentication token right here. Owner is gonna have its value fetched from request.user.underscoreID, the person that we just authenticated. So with this in place, when new tasks get created, we're not just taking the body data and saving that, we're adding on the owner property to actually create that association. Now that we have this in place, we can remove the old solution, we can save the task router, and we can test things out to make sure that this endpoint is working as expected. Let's head over to Postman and get that done. So over here, we already have a user created, and since we created it, the authentication token was automatically set up for us. We're gonna move over to the create task request. Now there's no need to change anything here. We're still passing in the necessary data and the URL is fine. But now that it's using authentication, it will be associated with a specific user, the one who's authenticated. I'm gonna go ahead and fire off the create task request exactly as it existed before. And down below we get a 201. We can see the stuff we had before with our task and also the new field owner. And right there, we're getting the object ID of the user who was authenticated. This is gonna be the piece of data that links tasks to their owner. And we're going to use that to make sure that someone can actually read a given task, that they can update a given task, and that they can delete a given task. If I'm trying to delete a task, I need to be able to confirm on the server that I'm the one who created it. Now that we have the basics in place, I wanna mess around with some more advanced ways we can work with this relationship. So let's go ahead and do just that by heading over to index.js. What we're gonna do is write just a little bit of code down below to mess around with a couple of the features that we now have access to. And once we understand how these work, we can integrate them into the task router to finish off those other endpoints. The first thing I'm gonna do is load in the task model, which we will be using. So const task equals, I will require it. That is dot forward slash models forward slash task. And once we have that in place, we'll set up a example asynchronous function for this little demonstration. It's not something that will live in our app long-term. I can call it main and we'll set it up as an async arrow function just so we can take advantage of the async await syntax. And then down below, we'll go ahead and just call it. Inside of here, what we're going to do is find our task by its ID, the one that we just created. Now I have the ID of the task right here, so let's grab that. Make sure you don't accidentally grab the owner ID. We want the task ID, not the user ID. Then from main, we're gonna go ahead and find it. So right here, const task equals, I'll use await with methods we've used before, task dot find by ID, and I will provide that ID as the first and only argument. Now we should have access to the task and down below, we're going to go ahead and print it. Right here, console dot log dumping task to the terminal. Now to get this code to run, all I have to do is save the file and down below, what do we see? We see our task showing up and I'm gonna go ahead and print out the owner property specifically. So right here, that's gonna be task.owner. When we do that, like we saw before, what do we get? We get that object ID printing. Now, what if we wanted more than just the ID of the user? What if I wanted the name of the user who created it? 
To do that, I would have to grab task.owner and fire off another query down below to try to fetch that user. And it would be a manual process where I search for a user by their ID. And the value I use to search is this one right here. With Mongoose, there's a way to actually set up the relationship between our two models. And it's gonna provide us with some helper functions that will make this possible with very minimal code. So to explore this, what we're going to do is continue to build off of the owner field over on the task model. We're going to set up one additional property. This right here is known as ref. It allows us to create a ref, which is short for reference from this field to another model. And in that case, it would be a reference to the following a user. So right here inside of quotes, I've typed out the model name exactly as we had typed it out in the file below. Over in the user model, down near the bottom, right here, we typed capital U user as the model name. That is the exact same one I'm using over inside of the tasks model to create that relationship. Now that we have this in place, we can easily fetch the entire user profile whenever we have access to an individual task. So all we're going to do is add a single line of code right here in between our two existing statements. This one is going to take owner and convert it from being the ID of the owner to being the entire profile of that owner. Now we do that with the following. It's asynchronous, so we'll use await and it's available on task. It's called populate. Populate allows us to populate data from a relationship such as the data we have right here for owner. We pass to populate the thing we're trying to populate. In this case, we want to populate the owner. We want to bring it from being just an ID to being the entire profile. Next up, to actually fire this off, we use the following exec populate. So what exactly is this line going to do? It's going to go off and it's going to find the user who's associated with this task and task.owner will now be their profile, the entire document, as opposed to just being the ID. So since the last time we ran the program, we added two lines. We added this line right here in the task model, and we added this line right here. Let's go ahead and save the program and see what we get. Down below, instead of getting what we had before, the ID, I'm now getting an object. This is the user document. This is the user that created that task. So now we have a relationship between tasks and users, and we can actually use populate to figure out which user created which task or which tasks a user owns. So let's go ahead and reverse this direction. We've taken a task and we found the user. Let's go ahead and start with a user and find their tasks. Now to do this, I'm going to start by commenting out these three lines. I'll leave them in place as a reference, but we're going to work on this second little project. And we'll start by trying to find a user by their ID. Now over inside of Postman, for that create task request, we had the ID of the owner. I'm going to grab that ID and bring that over to Visual Studio Code. And that's what I'll use to start with. Now we will need access to the user model. So right here, I'll load that in const capital U user, and we'll use require to load it in dot forward slash models forward slash user. Next up down below, we'll use find by ID with the user. So const user equals right here. We're going to use await with user dot find by ID, which we've used before. We'll provide our ID and then we'll go ahead and print out the tasks property on user right here. That's going to be console.log user.tasks. Now, this does not exist. Users do not have tasks on that document. And down below, we see that is true because we're getting undefined printing. Just like we fixed that for tasks. We're going to go ahead and adjust that in the other direction for users. Now, what's this going to look like? Well, what we're not going to do is actually create a tasks array on the user model. So up above, for example, we do create a tokens array to store those tokens. We're not going to do the same thing for tasks. The tasks live in a separate collection. Instead, 
what we're going to do is set up what's known as a virtual property. A virtual property is not actual data stored in the database. It's a relationship between two entities, in this case, between our user and our task. To start off, we'll be using something on user schema. It is called virtual and it allows us to set up one of these virtual attributes. Now it's virtual because we're not actually changing what we store for the user document. It is just a way for Mongoose to figure out how these two things are related. Right here, we pass to it two arguments. The first is the name for our virtual field. We could pick anything we wanted, but something like tasks seems appropriate. You could use my tasks or users tasks. And then we're going to set up an object. And in here, we're going to configure the individual field. We're going to start by setting up ref like we did for the task model. And we're going to set this one equal to task. So over inside of the task model, we have a reference to the user on owner. Owner is a real field. It is stored in the database. Over here, we have a reference between the user and the task on a virtual. This is not stored in the database. It is just for Mongoose to be able to figure out who owns what and how they're related. Now we're going to set up two other fields on this virtual to get things to work correctly. We have to specify the local field, which will be a string. And we also have to specify the foreign field. The foreign field is also going to be a string. So the foreign field is the name of the field on the other thing, in this case on the task, that's going to create this relationship and we set that up to be the owner. The local field is, the, is where that local data is stored. So we have the owner object ID on the task and that is associated with the ID of the user here. So the local field, the user's ID, is a relationship between that and the task owner field, which is also a user ID. So now that we have this in place, we can actually take that same code we had before, use populate once again, and get all tasks that a user created. So right here, I'm going to save user.js, the model file. I'm gonna head over to index.js, and we can see that right away, we're already getting a slight change. We went from undefined to null. To actually get our real data, we use populate. So here, I'm going to use await. I will be using populate on user. And I'm going to populate the tasks, that virtual field. Next up, we're going to go ahead and execute it by using exec populate, exactly like we did before to make sure things run. And with this in place, it's actually going to go off find all tasks created specifically by this user, and it will store them in a real array on the user.tasks property, which means we'll get it printed. Now, once again, nothing's getting changed about the user document. It's not actually stored in the database. It's a virtual. Right here, I'll run the program. Down below, I get the one task that I defined, which is fantastic. Now over inside of Postman, we could create an additional task. So up above, I'll change the description to something else. Go to office, something I'll be doing really shortly here after I'm done filming this video. I'll go ahead and send that off and down below, I can see it was created. I can go ahead and rerun the script by just saving index.js and down below, I can now see that two tasks are showing up when I print that tasks array. So there we go. We now have a relationship between tasks and users, and that's going to be really important for working with task data as we complete the rest of those endpoints. Now, the topic of virtuals and populate is one of the more confusing mongoose topics. I don't expect this to all be clear just yet. That's why I wanted to do things in a little playground area before actually using them inside of the task routes. We'll get more experience with them soon, and there'll also be challenges where you'll have to use this stuff on your own. I'm really excited to get to that, so let's go ahead and jump in to the next one.